Hey everybody, you're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. It is Monday, May 2nd, 2022. Back with another dose of economic reality. So the economic collapse is continuing to pick up speed. Now so far, it's been more of a inflationary collapse where the average working person, the average household is getting further and further behind the eight ball because prices keep rising. And for the most part, wages are not keeping up with these rising prices. So it's causing people to get buried under more debt, running up more credit card debt than we've ever seen in such a short period of time. At the same time in the background, we're being told that there's an economic recovery, that everything is good. Uh, but now we're starting to see households and people cutting back on certain types of spending. And we said this was going to happen. Uh, entertainment spending is on the decline. People leaving platforms like Netflix, people canceling their subscriptions. And we're seeing it come through now in earnings of certain companies. And we're going to talk about Amazon here in just a little bit. Uh, well, now combined with the collapse of your purchasing power, now we're seeing markets start to correct. And in a very big way, as we see the Fed pull back support of these markets. And all of the toxic debt and toxic loans that they bought up with fiat money, they bought it up with fake money. They put it on their balance sheet, uh, about $9 trillion. Now they're saying they're going to sell it off. They're going to unwind it. They're going to get rid of all these toxic assets. They're going to sell it back into the market. Uh, they could also let the bonds mature. And uh, this is what they're telling us. And this has the markets panicked and it has a lot of things happening now. We see the big red days in the stock market. Uh, today, actually, in the stock market was pretty amazing, a, a big recovery at the end of the day. And just looking at the Dow Jones, we see an amazing recovery at the end of the day. We were down to about 32,458. And within the, last, within the last two hours of trading, we saw it skyrocket back up to 32,928, closing out at over 33,000. Now, who was this? Was this a real investor? They just decided, hey, now's a good time to go ahead and uh, buy up a lot of this market. Or was it the plunge protection team? Well, it looks to be too big of an increase to not be the plunge protection team unless there was a massive short covering position out there. Uh, pretty interesting to say the least. Now, there's a recent article out there talking about what we talked about here in the last few reports about how Americans are having to choose between what they're gonna spend their money on. Do they wanna put food on the table or do they wanna go out and pay monthly, pay a monthly fee for streaming movies? Uh, for example, Netflix. Well, here's an article here. Surging prices force consumers to ask, can I live without it? So I'm not giving any advice here, any investment advice, do your own research, but if you're invested in an entertainment stock, um, might be a good time to just kind of take a look at uh, and see how Americans are going to be spending their money. If we continue to see these rising prices, soaring food costs, will Americans continue to put money down on non-essentials, including just entertainment, sports, streaming, uh, vacations? Will we start seeing hotels, um, more empty rooms? Um, we'll have to see. Uh, but it's going to get very, very interesting going forward. Now, this article points to some of the more recent activity, including Amazon's most recent quarter. Well, their sales grew at the slowest pace since 2001. That was about the time of the dot-com bust. Of course, Netflix lost subscribers for the first time in more than a decade. Uh, video game maker Activision Blizzard, um, also home appliance giant Whirlpool, and 1-800-Flowers all reported weaker sales in the last quarter. Now, the money printers are out there vowing to continue to fight inflation. They're still on with their next rate hike is what they're saying. Um, they're still going to get rid of all this toxic debt, all these toxic loans off of their balance sheet. They're going to sell it back into the market. And they're talking about another half a point rate hike this month in May. Um, so what's this going to mean? For the markets. Well, let's transition a little bit over to the housing bubble. Now, most of us know currently the home prices that we're seeing now are way beyond where we were at the peak of the previous bubble. 
2008. Now, there's still a lot of people out there saying that there is not a housing bubble, that these prices are fundamentally where they should be because there's not the crazy toxic loans that we saw back then. Even though there's a lot of metrics that indicate the bubble's a lot bigger than it was back then. And here's the latest. This is out of Fortune. The mortgage payment to income ratio has recently skyrocketed over 30%. And this is now at the highest level since about mid to late 2008. Now the question is, how long will it be before the average person that took out an enormous mortgage that's eating up this big or this chunk of their income, how long are they going to be able to hang in there before either one, trying to sell their home, maybe at a loss if prices stop going up, or two, before getting the home foreclosed and walking away. And especially with the rising costs everywhere else, it's going to be even more difficult for these people that really stretched on uh, getting such a big mortgage. It's going to be even more difficult than it was back in the previous housing bubble. Now, anything could happen. They could come in. They could cancel foreclosures. Uh, anything can be uh, canceled or changed or manipulated to stop this from happening. But if things continue the way they are, uh, a lot of people are going to feel a lot of pain, uh, especially the people that overpaid for their homes. And don't expect the cost of living to start coming down anytime soon. The price of diesel hit an all-time high, and that's really straining the trucking industry. So everything that gets transported via a truck, uh, your grocery stores are going to have to pay higher costs for delivery. And guess what? The consumer is going to have to eat up those costs. And it's going to be on the hook for that. Now, speaking of high oil prices, high fuel prices, Exxon and Chevron have posted blockbuster earnings as oil prices are soaring. So now that we've slowed down the pumping of oil here in the U.S. and we're more reliant now on importing oil, we're no longer a net exporter. Uh, we're again a net importer. Uh, companies are taking advantage of the U.S. consumer who, for the most part, are willing to swipe credit cards and go into as much debt as needed to fill up their vehicles for vacations. In some cases, just necessity, getting back and forth to work. But we can see the price gouging, essentially, that's happening here with these companies uh, taking advantage of the situation and keeping prices high and thus reporting these blockbuster earnings. And we even have these companies now, uh, for example, Exxon buying back more shares of their own stock. Exxon is now tripling its share repurchase program up to a total of $30 billion through 2023. So please let me know what you think down in comments. Will the money printers, the deciders, the um, engineers, the steerers of this economy um, the ones pulling the strings, will they continue to crash the economy and raise rates and shedding this toxic debt from their balance sheet and allowing rates to rise even further in the mortgage market? Well, I'd like to hear from you on this. Uh, but continue to stack, continue to prepare because prices do not look like they're going to come down anytime soon. As we see the oil tycoons out there, uh, the oil giants continuing to take advantage of the situation and uh, the U.S. consumer is going to feel the pinch for sure. Thank you very much for being here, for listening to this report. Talk to everybody very soon. Bye for now.